Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So far, 14 problems I've completed on allowances. Now, in this video, last three problems I'm going to explain on this topic of allowances. Then we will start the next topic called Parguzis. So allowances are of different types like entertainment allowance, house rent allowance, uh, transport allowance, children education allowance, children hostel allowance, etc. But now, we in this last video, I am going to explain about the children education allowance and children hostel allowance. So before starting the video, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Come on, see the 15th problem. Sri Venkateshwar Rao is working as a lecturer in uh, Lucknow. His salary particulars are as under basic pay 32,000 per month, DA 14,000 per month, conveyance allowance 4,200, and actual amount spent on conveyance is 3,200. Children education allowance 2,000 per annum per child for his three children and calculate the exemption to be allowed for allowances and compute to the gross income from salary. So we are required to compute the gross income from salary for this problem. See carefully, computation of gross income from salary for the assessment year 23-24. Now first, basic salary, 32,000 per month is given. 32,000 into 12, 384. Allowances, DA. Dearness allowance is given 14,000 per month. So 14,000 into 12, 168,000. Regarding conveyance allowance, the provision of income tax act is unspent amount is taxable. When the employer pays conveyance allowance to the employee, it is assumed that it is for official duties. So for official duties, how much amount is spent should not be considered unspent amount is taxable. So here out of 4,200, 3,200 is spent. So remaining 1,000 is taxable. Right? Next, children education allowance. First time we are coming across this allowance. Regarding children education allowance, Income Tax Act says, uh, the children education allowance given by employer to employee is exempted to the least of the following two amounts. Actual year received, actual education allowance received or rupees 100 per month or 1200 per annum per child for a maximum of two children. That is a ceiling given. The employer may give the allowance for any number of children, but Income Tax Act has given the ceiling that 1200 per annum per child for a maximum of two children. So here you can see children education allowance is exempted to the least of the following two. Actual allowance received in the problem it is given 2000 per annum per child for three children. That means employer gives to the employee 2000 per annum for one child. For three children, they are giving. So three into 2,000, 6,000 rupees he got. Now fixed ceiling is rupees 100 per month per child for a maximum of two children. When we say per month, we convert into per annum, 1,200 per annum for one child. Maximum two children. So 1,200 into two, 2,400. The so least of these two is exempted. So actual allowance received 6,000, exempted amount 2,400. The so remaining 3,600 is taxable children education allowance. Now take the total of this 5,56,600. This is the gross income from SAT. Now next, 16th problem. Sri Rajesh Agarwal is working in a limited company in Surat. His salary particulars are as under basic pay 16,000 per month, DA 2,700 per month, children education allowance to his daughter 1,500 per month. That means uh, children education allowance is given only for one child, daughter, and 1,500 per month. Hostel allowance to his son 
फाइव थाउजेंड पर मंथ एक्चुअल अमाउंट स्पेंड टू थाउजेंड पर मंथ कैलकुलेट ग्रॉस इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी ना वन मोर न्यू एलेवेंस कॉल्ड हॉस्टल एलेवेंस एस कम राइट एक्चुअली अकॉर्डिंग टू इनकम टैक्स प्रोविजंस द हॉस्टल एलेवेंस गिवन बाय द एम्प्लॉयर टू एम्प्लॉयी इज एक्सेप्टेड � Actual allowance received is 5,000 per month. So 5,000 into 12, 60,000. Or rupees 300 per month per child for a maximum of two children. So 3,000 per month means 3,000 into 12, 36,000. Oh, sorry, 300 into 12. 300 per month. So 300 into 12, 3,600 per child per annum. Right now, we are compute an actual amount spent on hostel should not be considered. All these points you have to write in examination. So, while watching the video, I always suggest my students to keep a notebook, calculator, pen ready and note down the provisions which I am explaining, otherwise, you'll forget it. Now, see here, Mr. Mahesh. Oh, sorry, we are doing this problem. Sri Rajesh Agarwal, computation of gross income from survey. Basic pay 16,000 per month into 12, 1,92,000. Then dear, dear Nasa 2,700 per month into 12, 32,400 as it is we have taken. Now children education elements working note and children hostel elements working note. In working note, we have to show all calculation. In examination also, you have to do the same thing. You should not roughly calculate and take the figures. The examiner wants the complete working notes. So here, children education allowance is exempt to the least of the following two amounts. Actual allowance received. So here, the SSC, the employee got 1500 per month. So 1500 per month into 12, 18,000 actual children education allowance received. Whereas the exemption ceiling is rupees 100 per month. That means 1200 per annum for one child and he got only for one child only so for 100 rupees per month into 12 so 100 into 12 1200 whichever is least 18,000 or 1200 1200 is exempted the actual amount received 18,000 exempted 1200 the remaining 16,800 is taxable education allowance children education allowance taxable 16,800 now children hostel elements. The children hostel elements is again exempted to the list of the following two actual elements received. So in the problem we are given 5000 per month. So 5000 into 12, 60,000 children hostel elements he got. Ceiling is 300 per month. That means 300 into 12, 3600 per annum for one child, for a maximum of two children. But here he got the allowance only for one child. So exemption will be only for one child, 3,600. 300 into 12. So 60,000 received, 3,600 exempted. So 56,400 is taxable. So here I have taken 56,400. The total gross income from salary, 2,97,600. That's it. Now last, last and final problem on these allowances. From the following particulars of income, Mr. Mahesh, who is working in a multinational corporation in Bangalore, compute gross income from salary. Again, details of pay per month, basic 13,000 per month, DA 8,000 per month, traveling allowance 3,000 totally, and 35% is spent, and academic allowance per annum. Half the traveling allowance is per month. Whereas academic allowance per annum is 15,000, actual amount spent is 9,000. So two new allowance, traveling allowance and academic allowance. This is the new point. The provision of income tax act, traveling allowance given by the employer to the employee, amount unspent is taxable. Here he got 3,000 per month. That means 36,000 per annum. 35% is spent. So remaining 65% is unspent, that is tax. Academic allowance 15,000 he got per annum, out of which actual amount spent 9,000. So 15,000 minus 9,000 unspent amount is 6,000, that is tax. That's all. 
So here you can see basic pay is given 13,000 per month into 12, 156,000. DA 8,000 per month into 12, 96,000. Traveling allowance working note number one. In examination, you have to write like this. So traveling allowance, unspent amount is taxable. 35% is spent. So remaining 65% is unspent. So 65% of 36,000, 3,000 per month into 12. So 65% of 36,000, 23,400. This is taxable. Traveling allowance. Now academic allowance received is 15,000. Less amount spent is 9,000. So unspent amount is 6,000. That 6,000 is taxable. Take the total 2,81,400 is the gross income from salary. So many problems I have solved. So on Income Tax Act, most of the provisions of last assessment year and this assessment year are same. Very, very few changes are there. So even you can rely on those videos which I have not made now, I have made in the last assessment year. So go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject, select the subject Income Tax for the assessment year 22-23 also. This is 23-24. But the last year was 22-23. So you can rely even on those videos also. That is also very, very important. Because of time constraint, I cannot be able to make all the videos. So many other obligations are there. That's why I'm hard pressed for time. I couldn't be able to, I mean, uh, make each and every video. So you can rely on those videos. But my suggestion, income tax is a very live subject. You can enjoy learning the provisions. I'm explaining each and every point in detail. So visit the uh, I mean playlist of my channel, select the I mean subject income tax for the assessment year 23, 24. Select each and every video. Be clear regarding what is income tax, what are the features, what are the objectives, what, starting residential, uh, residential status and how to compute the income tax. And what are the different heads of income tax? Income from salary, income from house property, income from capital gain, income from business and profession, income from other sources. All these things I have explained in detail. Apart from that, <coughs> the basic concepts. The basic concept like what is assessment year? What is previous year? Who is an SSC? What do you mean by income? Then uh, what is the average rate of tax? What, who is a person? All these things I have explained in detail. In examination, don't depend only on problems because in every examination, more than 40%, just, just like 40-60% you can make. 40% theory, 60% problems. So if you are not sure about theory, you cannot write the problems also. So have some patience in watching the theory video also. So inshallah we will start the next topic that is perquisites in the next video.